we're going to begin the funeral service for Mr. Bernard F. Hellman. If you have a cell phone, it asks you kindly to place it in the silent mode or turn it completely off at this time. I'd also like to welcome friends and family uh, attending via live stream. On behalf of the family, thank you as well. Services will be conducted by Rabbi Toby Manowit. We are going to begin, the rabbi is going to begin the service, um, and then we'll, cemetery gentlemen are also going to be lowering this casket and placing the vault cover on as we begin the, the start of the service. Thank you. Well, there's seats available. If you want to come and sit down, there's several yeah. here, there's a couple. There's plenty of seats. Everybody can sit. It looks like we're almost everybody. Yeah, please, take a seat. There's no reason to stand up. A hundred percent. And also, I promise you, there are blankets. The blankets are incredibly warm. So really, don't don't be embarrassed or shy. Um, use them. It's, it's just fine. Okay. okay. No, it's okay. Three. Yeah, it's fine. Huddle together, whatever you need. Death has taken our beloved BF. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. For BF's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, the, for the gift of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance, for all of these we give thanks. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of community. It tells us of our kinship with each other in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Together, I invite you to read with me the 23rd Psalm. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For every time, for everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. I'll begin speaking words shared with me by friends in a moment, um, but the words of Ecclesiastes just reminded me um, that Jewish tradition has some drama to it, that a time to tear and a time to sow, airplanes, welcome to Chicago. Um, in Jewish tradition, people would literally rend their garments Right? When someone would hear of a death, you would rip the clothes you were in and wear them for seven days so that everyone would know that you were mourning. We don't do that anymore. Now, um, many people, um, close relatives, will wear a black ribbon. But I think about the, the two things, both the big dramatic moment of that and also 
the quiet moment of everyone just knowing that this is who you were and how you were feeling. Uh, I was fortunate yesterday to gather some words from dear friends. It's Jewish tradition also to uh, offer words of honor. Bernard Frederick Hellman, known fondly as BF, was, as his friend Ava wrote in his obituary, a Renaissance man. He was, in her words, an actor, a poet, a writer, and so much more. The descriptor he held for longest and spent the majority of his time cultivating was that of friend. BF grew up in Granite City, City, Illinois. His first friends were his brother Howard and his many cousins. BF's parents, Morris and Riva, may their memory be for a blessing, owned an upscale women's clothing store. He loved his parents as most children do, but adored his mother. He was such a good son. He took care of his mom, always making sure she had what she needed and more. Later in life, when she developed dementia, he was there looking after her and keeping her company long after he knew she knew who he was. Aside from his family, BF's closest and longest friendship was with another BF, Barry Friedman. When they were children, their families spent time together, spending Jewish holidays and special occasions at one another's home. Later, when Barry met and married Ava, she too was enveloped in BF's love and friendship. This is who BF was. If you were related to a friend or a relative, you immediately became a friend as well. BF left Granite City for, a ch for Evanston, Illinois, where he earned a degree in journalism from the Medill School at Northwestern. He went on to receive a master's degree from the University of Illinois. He made Chicago his home for nearly 40 years. He held a variety of jobs, but his passion was for the theater. He acted in many of the small theaters for which Chicago is well known. He was a prolific voiceover and commercial talent. Later, he would use those talents in playing various roles in community theater in St. Louis and as a conductor on the Polar Express, delighting children each winter. BF friends talked about how they would miss the voice that landed him so many roles. It was a deep, wonderful voice. It was unmistakable, the kind of voice that is rarely found in others. After approximately two score years in Chicago, he moved to St. Louis, partly to get out of the cold, but mostly to spend time with his dear friend, Barry. His Chicago connections were never far from his mind. Pictures of his friends lined the walls. He treasured those friendship, like the one he had with Don and Barbara. He kept up with his theater friends and his cousins, enjoying connecting over Zoom whenever they couldn't be together in person. His friends described him as an interesting guy. It also sounds like he was an interested guy. He was curious and knowledgeable about many things. If BF was on your team, you could easily win a trivia contest. He indulged, he indulged friends by playing on their team from time to time. He was a film buff, he read Variety. When Oscar season rolled around, BF could go into great detail about each nominated movie and director. He also loved talking politics and baseball. I learned today that he played, uh, he played softball, is that what you said? That he played softball and poker. He would get passionate and bang the table when talking about what he saw as deceptive nature of not-to-be-named politicians. He was funny and quick with words. He had an acerbic wit. He was extremely generous and kind. As he had done in his youth, he joined Barry and Ava for big events. He was always generous with the children, buying gifts for bar and bat mitzvahs and weddings. He often made donations in people's names. Though he supported a lot of upstart theater groups, helping to finance them when they were in their infancy. His favorite was the Defiant Theater. He was a member and a huge supporter and mentor. He wanted to give back to the community that nurtured him. Later in life, he joined several Romeo groups, eating meals with a group of guys, making new friends along the way. He was part of a Monday lunch group at a St. Louis Italian restaurant for years on end. 
the prophet Isaiah spoke these words about the relationship with, between God and the people of Israel. I think they fit very well here. For the mountains may move and the hills may be shaken, but my loyalty shall never move from you, nor my covenant of friendship be taken. BF is no longer with us in body, but you'll still hear his voice. You'll remember his kindness. As the presidential election nears, you'll wonder what he might have said. You'll go to the theater or see a commercial and think of him. His friendship will endure. Shalom, Haver. Goodbye, friend. The casket has been lowered. It's traditional in Judaism that I ask you to rise for a memorial prayer. Shochen Bamromim Hamse Menucha Nechona Tachat Kanfe Ashrina Im Kiroshimu Tehorim Kizor Harakia Mazirim at Nishmat Biaf Halmen Shalach Lolamo Baal Harachamim Yaschirenu Beseter Kanfav Lolamim Vayitror Bitror Hachayim at Nishmato Aronai Hu Nachlato Vayanu Ach Beshalom Amishkavo Venomar Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering peace to be of Helman who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace and let us say, Amen. You can be seated. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a going, a growing from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, <coughs> from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage. Birth is a beginning and death is a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage from birth to death to life everlasting. In Jewish tradition, there are 613 commandments. In Hebrew, we say mitzvot. There are many commandments that we do that can easily be paid back. We visit someone who's sick, they visit us when we're sick. We rejoice at someone's celebration, they rejoice at our celebration. Burying the dead is one of the most important mitzvot, one of the most important commandments. <coughs> because it's something we do from the love in our heart that the person for whom we do it can't repay us. 
what I'm going to ask is for those people who would like to, uh, in a moment, we're going to ask the cemetery workers to empty some earth onto the ground. There's also small buckets with earth. And what I'm going to ask you to do is in Jewish tradition, we shovel three shovels full of earth. We also, some people have the tradition that they hold the shovel the wrong way. They hold the shovel backwards. And we hold the shovel backwards because it, it works, but it doesn't work well. So even though we feel obligated to follow this commandment, we're not doing it with gusto. We're reluctant to do it. Um, we also have um, some earth from the land of Israel. In Judaism, there's the idea that um, if one day there's a, a Messiah comes and there's an ingathering of exiles, um, that the first place everyone will arrive is Jerusalem. And so this is um, land from Jerusalem, from the Mount of Olives, where um, many, many years of ancestors are buried. And so BF will have the earth with, with him so that um, should there be uh, a wonderful uh, world to come, um, he'll get there faster than the rest of us. As soon as he puts down the cards that he and Barry are playing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, sure, yeah. Uh, and then we'll be ready in a minute. Hi everybody, my name is Don Rubin. I consider myself a BF Chicago connection. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for attending and for those of you on Zoom. Um, my last argument with BF was he actually over a funeral. He said no, and I said tough. <laughs> I, I said there's just too many people who want to have an opportunity to express their condolences and say goodbye appropriately. And so he finally, uh, you know, I think he called me a name, but he agreed to, uh, to go ahead. I, you know, I have to admit, as long as I knew BF, I, I never knew his middle name was Frederick. And uh, I always knew him as BF, or actually for many years when it referred to Barry Friedman, there's always BF's best friend, Barry, because I didn't even know Barry's last name. It was just one of those things. But, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to extend my appreciation for everybody being here. He was, I think, extraordinary is uh, too, not too exaggerated a word to describe him. He was just a unique extraordinary uh, some might say a little eccentric i might agree with that i think he was uh but uh you know we, we argued many times over politics and uh and things and he he would bang his head on the table i think sometimes he want to bang me but uh you know he held back but i, I really wanted to, to, to express my appreciation for his st louis family too i think bf went back to to st louis really to be made whole again I think he really needed to be with his Granite City and St. Louis families. I think it was terribly important for him. It, it restored him. Um, and, you know, what Barry did for him was extraordinary. But I, I particularly wanted to thank Barry's wife, Ava. You know, we lost Barry several months ago, and Ava really hasn't had an opportunity to grieve properly. But she jumped right in where Barry left off. She spent, you know, almost every waking moment uh, at BF's bedside, working with the doctors, working with the nurses, making sure he was being properly taken care of. And uh, I can't express my gratitude to her and how extraordinary a person she is. And I'm really glad that we've become friends. And to a St. Louis crew, I really appreciate the, the times you visited. It was very important to BF to, to see you. And I know he appreciated having the opportunity to, to talk to you and maybe say goodbye. So I just wanted to say thank you very much. and. You know, I, I told my wife, uh, if I die during the winter in Chicago, all my remains move to Miami for the funeral because this is, this is a kind of a tough way to go. But I don't want to say anything more, but thank you. Hopefully we'll see you later at our house uh, uh, and we're welcome to, to see you and greet you and you have an opportunity to have a greater conversation. Thanks. So the, the wonder of Chicago in the spring is it seems that it's just as surprising as BF was. You never know, but also um, in another month, this um, yucky weather—it's there'll be there'll be beauty all around this place. And so, if you come back in a month, um, you know, or sometime in the future, um, 
the rain will have given ways to you know wonderful growth. Um, I'm going to ask um, Don and Barbara and maybe to come first, and then what you can all do is um, there are two buckets. You can scan. Uh, you can make two lines if you want to use the earth. Um, just please be careful on the wood because it's slippery in the wet. chooses to is welcome to join. Also, also, I'd like to remind you the family will be sitting Shiva at the Winter Rubin Residence, 806 Broadview Avenue in Highland Park until 8 o'clock this evening from now until 8 p.m. And if you could please park on the east side of the street, please. East side of the street. That information is on your folders as well. And we're gonna put the register book out for another moment or two if you'd like to take a moment to sign. Thank you. As soon as we're done shoveling, we're just gonna gather for Kaddish and then we'll Ceremony with two things. Oh, there's a mic. Yeah. 
in Jewish life, we, cont- we, we finish uh, Jewish ceremony with um, the Kaddish, which is um, the, it's really not a prayer about death, it's really a prayer about life. Um, if you've, uh, the words are in transliteration on the back of the um, handout, um, but even if you don't know them, you've never heard them before, you'll hear me about four or five times saying amen. Um, and one of the ways that mourners know that you're with them is by hearing your amen. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba b'alma divara chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol b'yit Yisrael v'agala v'zman kari v'imru amen yehesh me rabba mevorach le'olam ol'olme o'maya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit ramam v'yit nasei Vitadar, Vitale, Vitala, Shame de Kurisha, Brihu, La Ela, Minko, Birhata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Baama, Vimru, Amen, Yehesh Lama, Raba, Min Shemaya, the Chaim, Alenu, Vial Kol, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, Ose Shalom, Bimomav, Huya, Ose Shalom. Alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May God grant peace to all those who mourn and comfort all of the bereaved among us and all over the world as together we say amen. The last thing we say um, at, a, at a funeral is um, go forth in peace to life because we know that there's sadness and there's grief but we also know that there is a world out there and that the person who has died would want us uh, would want us to live it. So um, thank you all so much for coming. Now go forth in peace to life.